Hello, 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 everybody. Woo. Okay, let me just connect um, the gram so we can all be present here today. Okay, let me just put this right here. Okay. And there we go. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's weekly healing circle, as we always do. Um, and I'm just I'm really excited. I feel super, super grounded. It is tourist season, y'all. Okay, we are in the season of seasons. Um, it is definitely <laughs> one of those times right now. Um, and I feel like there's just, whew, there's a lot energetic wise. I feel like this is just such a great time foundational wise. And I'm just like, I'm so excited. I like as a Capricorn, anytime one of the earth sign season comes through, I just feel like, I, I just feel so grounded. Like naturally I'm just like, oh, I, I just feel really grounded. Like it, it just, it helps, it helps to amplify my earthiness already. Um, so yeah, definitely a really, really fun time. Um, and I can't wait to kind of like dive in deeper into the season. There's so much stuff coming up uh, during the season itself. It's going to be, oh my God, y'all. We are going to break down um, the chart in a bit. But before we are going to start, hello, hello, everybody. Hello, um, Taurus moon feeling content right now. Um, the moon is actually in Cancer right now. Oh, or, or did you mean your moon is in Taurus? You might have meant that your moon is in Taurus. I'm not sure if you meant that, that your moon is in Taurus. But, um, oh, I think you meant that your moon is in Taurus. Feeling content right now. I mean, Taurus moon is like one of, one of like the best moons out there anyway, so congrats if it is your Taurus moon right now. I have Taurus in my 10th house. So I'm not really surprised the amount of work that I'm going to be doing um, during Taurus season, but I can't wait to kind of share all of the things. Hi, Sierra. Hello, 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 everybody. I'm so excited to have everybody here. Hello, TikTok. Hello, Instagram. We is live on all the things right now. We are going to be doing a third eye chakra meditation because I want us to look ahead and by us, I mean you. <laughs> I want you to look ahead in your futures, okay? Before we do any of the forecasts, before we do any of the breakdowns, because I want you guys to get the glimpses of things that are coming ahead for y'all. So I'm gonna give everybody like a minute to come through, but we are gonna be doing a meditation. Um, hi, Cynthia, hello, everybody. So lovely to have everybody here today. Uh, we're gonna be using the Mudra deck, okay? One of the favorite decks. If y'all are interested in this deck, I left it in the description box, in the comments, um, in, the, in the description box, in the, in the description box, um, if y'all would like to get this deck for whatever reason. I actually love, love, love this deck. I discovered this deck like years and years ago um, while I was on a spiritual retreat in Grenada. Our yoga teacher, she had this deck and I was just like, I need to buy it. <laughs> um, so I did, and now, now this is what we use um, for our meditation. So 1,000%, one of my favorite things. Um, so yeah, we're gonna be doing a third eye meditation. Hi, Michaela. Hello, everybody. Oh my God, so much love today. Um, you got my third eye waiting to... <laughs> I think everybody's re ready to do like a little third eye work. Okay, I feel like it's such a great thing to do to just kind of look at, you know, what's what's coming ahead, what's, you know, how the waters are, okay? And because, you know, the moon is in Cancer right now, there, I mean, even though we have a lot of Taurus energy, the moon is in Cancer, I like to start it off very intuitive, okay? So the moon is starting, we're on a Monday, on a moon day, on, in the, and it's in Cancer, like, we need to, we need to do some third eye work, we need to make sure that we are 
right here, right there. Um, so that way we are, you know, ready and prepped for what's ahead. So yeah, I'm going to give everybody like another two minutes and then we're going to get started on the meditation. So while I give y'all to come through, I'm going to go ahead and um, ask for the mudra. I'm going to ask spirit to give me the mudra or the mudras okay that we need to be using for this meditation once again for those who are just joining we are doing a third eye chakra meditation um to specifically see what's coming up ahead for us so um i'm going to be picking out the mudra that we're going to be using during the meditations um so stick around if you want to see that or you can always re-watch the lives on youtube and on instagram and then do the meditation whenever you want to. <laughs> okay, so spirit, which mudras should we be using for this third eye chakra meditation? Oh, okay. Oh, that almost fell. I caught it. Oh, y'all, y'all. It already, I've just been here for a couple of minutes and spirit's already trolling. Okay, so. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay. So the first one that came out is um, lower body, body breathing. Firmly supported by body and breath, I move forward in life with complete confidence. Wow. Lower body breathing. This is actually a really, really, really good one for the lower chakras. Um, so definitely. Oh, wait. Instagram, can you not hear me? Can anybody not, do people not hear me? Okay, let me know and then I'll restart the live on Instagram if y'all can't hear me. Let me know. Um, but this one, lower body breathing, firmly supported by body and breath. I move forward in life with complete confidence. So that's the first mudra. Then the next one, this is one that I talk about all the time, self-mastery, okay, self mastery doesn't this look like one of the things that like villains do in movies all the time does this not look like oh, like what villains do in movies all the time when they're like you know they're just like <laughs> kind of like it just kind of looks like that but it says in cultivation of self mastery free the cultivation of self mastery frees me from the limitations of the personality y'all on instagram let me know if you can hear me because I'm still trying to figure out if y'all can hear me. Because somebody said they can't hear me. I just want to make sure everybody can hear me. So just somebody put it in the comments. Because I don't know. Um, self-mastery. That's what self-mastery looks like. This is a mudra for self-mastery. Mudra for self-mastery. Okay. The next one. We have upper body breathing. So not only do we have lower body breathing but you also we also have upper body breathing and it says with a growing sense of expansiveness i look at life from a wider perspective Ooh, okay upper body breathing upper body breathing upper body breathing okay i'm gonna just go ahead and restart the live on instagram because i think I think they can't hear me, so I'm going to just, and there you go. Hopefully, I you can hear me. Okay, hopefully y'all can hear me now. Um, so the third one is upper body breathing. Okay, that's what it looks like. I'm going to show it all again for y'all who are co just coming in. Um, and it says, with a growing sense of expansiveness, I look at life from a wider perspective, okay? from a wider perspective. There you go, that's what it looks like. And the last one is uplift currents of energy, uplifting current of energy. And it says nourished with the uplifting energy, I embrace life wholeheartedly. Ooh, and it's kind of cool because this is like the peace sign. <laughs> it's, it's like, like y'all, it's a peace sign, y'all. <laughs> but it's just on the side. So this one, uplifting current of energy uplifting current of energy there we go hello everybody on tiktok i see y'all comments so i'm going to show y'all the cards again we're going so for the who's who just joined we are doing a third eye chakra meditation i am showing y'all the mudra options that you have for this meditation so go ahead and pick 
the one that you're intuitively getting called for to use for this meditation and then we're going to get started so again the first one is lower body breathing firmly supported by my by body and breath i move forward with life with complete confidence okay lower body breathing if y'all have your card already go ahead and put a heart in the comments so i know who's ready and so i know when y'all ready to start so lower body breathing that's what it looks like so that's what you're going to be doing with your hands okay the next one self mastery the cultivation of self mastery frees me from the limitations of the personality self mastery okay that's the next option again if you already picked your card go ahead and drop a little heart so then we can in the comments so that way i know who's ready to go i see some hearts already upper body breathing with growing sense of expansiveness i look at life from a wider perspective y'all wider perspective upper body breathing upper body breathing Okay, the next one, uplifting current of energy. And it says, nourish with uplifting energy. I embrace life wholeheartedly. That is beautiful. Uplifting current of energy. Let me know if I see. I think YouTube is ready to go. YouTube is ready to go. Um, TikTok, let me know if y'all ready to go. If y'all good to go and ready to do the thing. And Instagram, I saw some hearts. So I think y'all is ready to go for the most part um if everybody is ready i think y'all is ready i think y'all is ready okay is, if everybody is ready to begin the meditation as i always say i'm going to give you the spiel you can get into half lotus pose you can get into full lotus pose you can just lie on your back for the meditation if that is what makes you more comfortable um just start taking some deep breaths in and start to just relax relax your body relax your any tension to start to breathe in into your body now take a deep breath in and a deep breath out Take another deep breath in and take another deep breath out. I want you on your next breath to start to visualize yourself inside of a golden egg surrounded by stars. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. This golden egg energy is divine healing light. So you're taking in, breathing in that divine healing energy. You're breathing in and you're breathing out. Taking deep breaths in Sending that divine healing energy anywhere in your body that needs a little bit of extra attention. And you're taking deep breaths out.
on your next breath, I want you to zoom in to your face, to the point where your third eye lies. And I want you to visualize a door in your third eye space. Go ahead and open that door and start to make your way through the tunnel, through the light. You are now inside of your third eye chakra. Take a moment to notice any colors, anything that you see that is coming up to your attention. On your next breath, go ahead and ask your third eye chakra to show you what you need to know to have a, the best tourist season that you can have. On your next breath, ask your third eye chakra to show you a resolution to a problem that you are currently facing. On your next breath, ask your third eye to show you what habit you should be incorporating today to have a successful tourist season.
on your next breath, ask your third eye chakra to show you whom or what you need to avoid during tour season. On your next breath, ask your third eye to show you the vision that your ancestors have for you in order for you to have the best successful season yet. On your next breath, ask your third eye to show you what you need to be doing spiritually to maintain your spiritual self. Take a moment to thank your third eye chakra for giving you the downloads that you needed to hear and start to make your way out through the tunnel through the door and back inside of the golden egg.
Take a deep breath in. And a deep breath out. Take a deep breath in, sending that divine healing light anywhere in your body that needs a little bit of extra attention. And a deep breath out. When you're ready, you can come back. Just let me know in the comments when you're back. I'll give y'all a couple of minutes. I'll give you another minute. I see some of y'all are back again. Welcome back. I hope that that was helpful and that you have received the messages that you needed to receive from that meditation. Thank you for everybody who did it. Um, for those who came in in the middle, if you wanted to do the meditation, you can find it on my YouTube or on my Instagram. That's what I'll be posting. Uh, Lucas said, just came back. I usually have a difficult time visualizing, but that was really powerful and clear. That's really good. That means that your third eye is more opened. This is why guided meditations are really powerful. Really, really powerful. But I'm glad that was helpful. I'm glad that y'all got what you needed from that. Um, we are going to get started on the energy of the week because, you know, we're, we're in a new season. We're in a new saison, okay, as I personally like to call it. So there's definitely a lot of things to cover. Um, right now, we do have a stellium in Taurus right now. Uh, we have the sun in Taurus, Mercury in Taurus, Venus is in Taurus, and Uranus is in Taurus right now. So they're all definitely in this really grounded 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 energy and right now it is a really powerful powerful time to really reevaluate a lot of different things especially because Taurus season oh thank you um Taurus season is is the season of possessions y'all it's the season of comfortability there's a season there's a reason why the sun moves into Taurus and then we kind of feel cute. We kind of want to go get our hairs did. We kind of want to like, you know, it's like a little bit of a vibe. Like you feel, you know, comfortable, you feel relaxed. Um, Taurus season out of all the seasons has a way of like just grounding really fast and almost getting comfortable. Cause you know, Taurus season is, Taurus energy is very fixed. It's a fixed energy, it's a comfortability. Um, kind of energy so kind of like oh what do i what do i want to do what are my comfort comfort foods what are, what do i i love to do what what can i do that i love what can i do that i will get the pleasure that i need um because tourist season is all about the value 
okay they value things a lot they value their happiness or they value their food their va they value their enjoyment their love their just happiness okay so that's very venusian it's Ven we're in a venus it's a venus vibe right now and the fact that like venus is in taurus right now is just like it's a party y'all it's definitely a party but the factor that i want y'all to remember while we're in taurus season is that uranus the planet of unexpected change okay the planet of the higher conscious minds the planet of upgrades the planet of self-evolution and pretty much self-mastery is also in taurus okay so because you have all of these other taurus placements okay with where, where, where like the other the rest of the planets are you see uranus saying okay you know what i've been doing the work by myself i have been and on quite frankly uranus has been doing a lot of work to taurus i feel like a lot of tauruses have been going through a lot the past like the, they've just been going through a lot while uranus has been transferring in taurus and so there is this kind of evolution that's happening with Taurus energy, what it values, what it needs to evolve from, what it needs to release and let go, how it can be better, not only to itself, but to others. How can it enjoy things better? How, it's like, this is a level up energy that Uranus is like, okay, this is great that you've been doing things like this for a really long time and that's cute and all, but I need you to be better. Like you have so much potential and I need you to try to be your best self. Like I just, I need you to put in, I need you to put in more work. I just need you to try better. I need you to apply yourself. I need you to value more than just this, this, and that. no, you need, you need to reevaluate everything as a whole so there is this deeper understanding there is a deeper evolutionary like factor underlying Taurus season so even though yeah it feels comfortable right there is a lot of things that are going to happen during Taurus season that are actually going to be i would say very triggering not only to your path and i highly recommend looking at your transit so you can see where taurus is transiting for you for me as in my 10th house so I, you guys will be seeing what, you know, is, is coming next month, um, which just goes hand in hand in alignment with everything that I just said. Um, but there, it, you it, just take a look at where Taurus is for you, which house this falls in, because that's going to tell you everything you need to know about where you need to be more flexible, where you need to make room, where you need to clean house. This is a spring cleaning situation. I need y'all to like, revisit some of these people some of these friends some of these like i need you to revisit i need you to clean house it's kind it's just kind of like if you want do you want to go with me are you gonna help me are you hindering me are you crippling me in any way are you creating any type of toxicity in my life okay yeah then i can't have you around me anymore like i cannot we're not going to do this so there is this kind of focus on the evolution of the self and valuing your self evolution. This is why I was actually really excited that self mastery came out at one of the mudras. Cause you guys know, I talk about self mastery a lot, a lot on the channel, a lot because self mastery is the goal. Okay. If you were to ask, um, what is the point of spirituality? What is the point of working on yourself on healing yourself, protecting yourself, evolving yourself, manifesting, doing all literally anything within spirituality, manifesting a relationship manifesting a friendship getting a job opportunity it all comes down to one thing and that is self mastery and that is customizable to everybody else it looks completely different it could look completely different to one person than the other it doesn't have to be the same exact mastery that everybody it's not you know we all have to do the exact same thing that's not how it works okay but it's all about mastering the self. And we all must do that in our own ways. It is a very, very powerful time for not only self-evolution, but coming closer into that self-mastery because Uranus is all about the growth. It's all about the, okay, but how are you evolving? How are you like, how how are you getting better how are you enjoying life better how are you um enjoying your body better how are you treating your body better how are you enjoying the world better how are you actively working on the thing that you are you you're supposed to be doing in this life how are you doing that okay how 
how, how, how are you doing that? And so it comes down to understanding that we are evolving at the root level. Okay, at the root level, because when there's an earthy season, it triggers the root chakra, even though, yes, root chakra is technically ruled by Capricorn energy. Um, but all of the earth signs actually trigger the root, the root energy when they're there because they affect and dictate different parts of our lives. Taurus focuses on the financial stuff, the value stuff, the possession stuff, okay? Capricorn energy focuses on achieving and moving forward to, to growing the things within our physical realm. Um, and then Virgo focuses on the healing that needs to happen, whether that be within our bodies or whether that be with other people, with the earth, with the plant, like what, however it looks like. And so there is a, a, a little bit of a triggering that happens when you move through earth sign seasons and there is a comfortability. It really connects you like it's, it's, we're not in airy season anymore. During airy season, what was triggered? Our solar plexus, okay? And our head, our head was triggered. Both of these things. Why? Because the sun, the sun which rules the solar plexus, um, is all about action. And what does Aries do if not decide and run, decide and move, decide and make change, shift shit, like decide and like go, go and push ahead into what it is that it just decided on. And so because we have Aries season setting the tone for like some of the downloads, like you would have received, especially last, last season, you would have received downloads and stuff that you needed to work on personally. Um, you would have received, um, you, you would have probably let go on certain things or certain people that you personally didn't need around you for whatever reason that was. And it would have felt like that new year, new year's kind of vibe where it's just like, okay, I kind of have some fire in my step. I feel like I can get some stuff done. I feel like I have, you know, I can focus on this. I feel like I can work on this. I feel like I need to, you know, give this my energy. I, I feel like I, I, I'm passionate about this right now. And then tourist season comes, it's like, okay, I'm comfortable. I'm very comfortable with how I'm feeling. Like tour season is not a feel bad type of season. Okay. It's ruled by Venus y'all. It's all about pleasure and enjoying the things that you love. So there is this kind of sense of like, okay, we're feeling comfortable. We're feeling like, you know, we're ready. So it's, you know, we got the sun out, you know, it's, it's springtime. So it's been raining on and off. Okay. It feels like Florida up here in the tri-state. Okay. It feels like Florida because one second is raining, one second is cloudy, one second is sunny, like straight up Florida over here. But there is this kind of like focus on the on like feeling earthy, feeling like, oh, like I'm, I'm, you're getting water, like you're nurtured. You're like, oh, I'm growing more leaves. I'm just, I'm very comfortable in my pot. I'm like if you're aware of plant, you're just like, I'm comfortable and I'm growing and I'm thriving. I'm doing all of these kind of things. So there is this kind of this focus on comfortability. And so what does Uranus do to that comfortability? It says, poke, 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 poke. I'm gonna poke the hell out of you because you think you're comfortable, but you're not as comfortable as you think you can be. And I need you to actively look deeper into what you enjoy, how you can better enjoy things. Like if you have limited yourself in your understanding, especially now that Venus is in Taurus and we have like Mercury in Taurus, okay? The things that you have convinced yourself in the past that you're like, no, this is what I love or this is, or yeah, this friend is great to me. And you know, we've been friends for such a long time, but they end up having like to be, they have toxic tendencies and it's just kind of like, okay, do I even want you to round now? Like, it's almost like there's a spring cleaning happening right now. You need to reevaluate. What are you keeping? What are you evolving from? And where are you evolving to? If you are being triggered, if you look at your transits, right? And you're like, well, Abby, I got, you know, all of this Taurus energy is sitting in my third house. Okay, so that means your communication style is being triggered. Your the way you are communicating, how you are um delivering the message, even the work that you need to do, you might actually want to do something more uh, like pleasurable with your voice. Maybe you want to do an audiobook, or maybe you want to do like 
you want to get into voice acting or something like that. Or maybe you want to fulfill like a longstanding dream that you know you can do like all these voices, but you like never actually went for it. You never actually like did anything with it. You just made people laugh here and there in some rooms. Like there's just like different ways of how you can advance and do more with what you already have. That's the key with Taurus energy. What can you do? And if it's not like, if, if it gets to the point you can't do anything with what you have, you have, it's a clean house situation. We got, it's a clean house situation. It's a garage sale situation. It's a thank you next situation. Um, because at this point in time, if we ignore what we have to actively release so we can evolve, evolve and make room for the things that we actually want, then we're going to have to do the spring cleaning. We are just going to have to do the spring cleaning. It is absolutely necessary for us to do it. And if you look at the cards, we have the page of pentacles coming up, right? Right from the get-go. The page of pentacles coming up right from the get-go. Then we have the queen of wands, okay? Because that Aries energy, that fire energy, that like, oh, I, I there's so many things that I that I kind of want to do. I have like goals. Like I feel pumped up. I feel excited about some of these projects, some of these things that that is being worked on. Like I feel like so pumped about this. Then you have the Five of Pentacles. The Five of Pentacles. So there's all this energy, and where is it being directed? Where is it being directed? The Five of Pentacles energy is the energy of lack. It is the energy of literally not having any. In a Taurus season energy, like. Taurus is all about having shit, okay? And we're starting off with five of pentacles energy. Like, are, are you sure that that friend is actually your friend? Are you sure you do you have a good friend? Are you, or do you need to reevaluate what you actually have? Are you sure that you have a computer or do you have something that doesn't even turn on anymore? Are you sure that you have supportive family members or are you actively just kind of taking in from their energy and then it just affects you and you absorb it like a sponge and so it becomes like this toxic loop within the family um like drama okay what is it that you are actively looking at which area of your life and again go look at where you have Taurus in your chart and go look at how where do you see lack in that space where do you see lack in that house where are you seeing that that friction where are you seeing the the kind of like where do you see the need to not only be more flexible but make room for more okay how do you see that coming in how do you see that um like progressing how do you like for example let's say you have taurus in your fifth house okay fifth house is the house of pleasure okay Pleasure, okay, it's literally the Tauruses of things. It's a, it's the Leo house, though. But it is, it's the Tauruses of things. It's pleasure. It's all about enjoyment, okay? Venusian energy, very, very fun, fun energy. How are you having fun right now? How are you making fun, making sure that you are actively having a good time, that you're practicing your self love, that you're taking care of yourself, that you feel good, that you look good, and you. And all of that makes you feel better, that it makes you feel like you're in alignment with yourself, that it makes you feel like every step you take is exactly what you is, okay? Is exactly who you are and period. And period. How are you working with your pleasure energy? How, and that includes within the sacral chakra space, okay? How are you actively working with your own sacral chakra magic? How are you working that? How are you manifesting through your womb space? How are you manifesting through your conductor? How are you conducting and bringing in more to yourself? Or how have you become complacent and just kind of like, you know, are letting things just kind of uh, sway their way or just kind of like blow through the winds your way? How are you actively manifesting towards yourself? If you're, if you have Taurus sitting in your sixth house, what are you doing about your body? Is a question that I'm asking. What are you doing about your body? How, how have you been treating your body? What have you been eating? How have you been nourishing your body? Have you been nourishing your body? Have you been drinking enough water? What do you need to heal right now? Do you know where you have been stagnant? How has how is your mental health? Because the th the thing about ignoring the things that you need to focus on, especially because of this Taurus energy, is Uranus. Because Uranus will be the he, 
Uranus is a planet that if you don't pay attention, if you if you don't actively say, oh, look, Uranus is over here and it's going to be triggering this for me, right? If you don't actually actively pay attention, what Uranus does is like, oh, so I'm in your sixth house. So you haven't really been paying attention to your body. So car crash. Now you're in the hospital. You broke like your leg, your whole entire leg and like your arm. And now you are you have to focus your whole entire time on healing yourself. And it's all because you were supposed to bring your awareness back into your body to make sure that your body is in a good place and that it's healed and ready to go. But because you weren't paying attention to it, Uranus almost had to be like, okay, let me, I'm going to have to like really like trigger you, like poke, pay attention to this, pay attention to this, pay attention to this because you're actively not doing the work that needs to be done. So I need y'all to really, really pay attention to where is their lack? Okay, where is their lack? Where is their lack? Because it feels like this five of pentacles energy is like, it feels like there is lack, there's active lack in those spaces. And that's exactly where you're going to be getting triggered. I, I don't want you to be surprised. Thing about Uranus energy too, is that you never know when it's just gonna, when the needle's gonna drop. But I can tell you as an astrologer that if you know the energy's there, the best you can do is work with it. So that way you don't get caught up in some bullshit. If I know Uranus is sitting in my damn sixth house, I'm not going to be ignoring my sixth house. What is the point of that? You act, You have to work with what it is that you got. You have to work with the energy itself. You have to look at it and say, okay, well, you know what? Uranus is in my sixth house. I kind of got a cold now. I'm feeling a little bit like stuffy. I've been feeling a little weird. My bones are starting to hurt. Like all you, you you have to like listen to yourself, listen to your body, because those are the parts that are being really, really focused on, really triggered during this time. Okay. So I need y'all to look at the lacking part. The lack it's, it's the lack for me. It's the lack. Then we have every single other card that came after this is in reverse. And that should tell you like almost everything that you need to know. We have the hermit in reverse. So healing, Healing is definitely a focus. Healing is something that needs to occur. Y'all have not self-evaluated, okay? Y'all have not self-evaluated and it's showing. It's showing a lot. Um, there, there needs to be a pulling away so you can actually reflect on what it is that you need to heal, what it is that you need to detach from, what it is that you need to contemplate on. You need to you need to dial it back. Then we have the two of pentacles. There is an imbalance, and that's exactly where you're gonna get triggered in that imbalance. That is exactly. You think you could just leave random shit? It's kind of like think about having a garden, right? And I always make this example. This is a perfect example. You have a garden, right? And you're trying to plant all these things in your garden because you you're trying to sustain yourself. You're trying to manifest beautiful things into your, your garden. You want to have beautiful flowers. You want to have a, a house. You want a car. You want whatever it is that you want. Okay. And then you have, you randomly start putting stuff in your garden that's covering the actual, like the earth. So it can't actually grow anything. You have like a bunch of shit just sitting in your garden, but then you're also telling your garden, grow me some shit bring this manifest this towards me do this to do x c and b and it's just kind of like but where's the room how am i supposed to grow this when you put like a whole entire like storage box on top of me like how am i supposed to where am i supposed to grow from around this like you know how annoying it is going to be to curve out of the box and then come back up like i can do it but it's going to take longer it's going to take longer than you know it would have if you would have just gave me the space to look at the sun and grow you know what i mean this is this is the, where the imbalance lies this not if not self evaluation of the healing that needs to be had the things that need to be released because that hasn't been properly done that imbalance is then created and then it just signals the the, the universe it signals the guys it signals spirit like oh well this is something that needs to be addressed. This is this is somewhere that needs to be healed. This is something that needs to be focused on. Okay. And then you have the eight of pentacles in reverse. Why? Because the work has not been done. The work has not been done. You have not, you have not applied yourself. You have not done what needs to be done for this to actually bring, just 
bring some solutions to the table. You haven't been trying to fully balance yourself. There have been some imbalances that have been created that actively are working its way through maintaining and keeping the five of pentacles energy the debt energy okay the lack energy the feeling depressed energy the not necessarily finding and having and maintaining that pleasure energy okay it's kind of like imagine it's like it's like venus season y'all like it's literally like venus season it's venus is all about pleasure and enjoyment and just sensuality and like feeling good and looking good and eating good and all okay that venus Imagine ha being like coming to a party. Everybody's having a really great ass time. The vibe is cute. There's food. This like it's an aesthetic. It's cute. And then you come in and you're just like, I'm depressed. I feel like crap from so many different things. My relationships, shit. I can't. Um, I, my finances are a hot mess. I don't know if I can take afford a cab home. Like, and you're just, you bring in gunk into the vibe. Okay. The vibe is enjoyment and pleasure. And then you're saying, okay, well, I get that you guys are having fun and this is the energy of that, but I'm actually having a really, really bad time. Well, what are you going to do about having that bad time? What, what are you going to do about being in this energy in this lacking energy? What are you actively doing about it? How are you evolving past it? What are your longer term goals? How are you going to apply yourself? Like I need, I need, I need y'all to do, I need y'all to go into self-evaluation. I need y'all to ask yourself, what actively do you need to heal? Every week in Taurus season, I need y'all to actively focus on what it is that you need to heal that particular week. So you don't get surprised and Uranus is not like, whoop, I had to whip your ass over here because you weren't paying attention. You weren't doing the work. work. Like, let's say you have Uranus in your eighth house. Y'all, Uranus in your eighth house. In the eighth house right now. If you have Uranus transiting in your damn eighth house, that's death energy. That is death transformation. That is literally you being forced to transform. It, 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 instead of it being pleasurable, it can be very dark and heavy. Why? Because the eighth house is the darkest house in astrology. It's just, it's the house, it's the darkest house. It's the house of Scorpio, house of Pluto. It is a very, very dark and heavy house. It can be a very productive house to do a lot of work in, but it takes work. It takes work. So what it, what is it that you are lacking? What, what, what is the healing that you're lacking? Where are you lacking it? Where are you blocked in? I want you to look at all of your chakras. Where are you struggling with, okay? Where have you not been putting in the work or have you been spending your whole entire time just trying to manifest a lover or a boo? I said it once and I said it again, okay? I said it once and I said it again. The two practices that everybody should be practicing at all times is healing and protection work. Those two, if you are a spiritual person, religious, uh, what whatever you, it is that you practice, okay? You need to be constantly healing and practicing protection. Why? Why do you need to do that? Why do you need to do that? Why do you need healing? Because when you heal, you are taking a step closer to self mastery. You are making yourself, your spirit, your ego, okay, more comfortable, more in alignment with your higher self, okay? You are more who you are supposed to be. You are not getting tripped up or feeling like you're not like you're not in, in the place that you need to be or you're feeling like, oh my God, I'm depressed. Oh my God, I feel clouded. Oh my God, I don't know what I'm doing with my life. I don't know what I'm meant to do. Oh my God. No, 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 no. Self-mastery is, I know who the fucks that is. You cannot tell me who the fucks I'm not because I know who the fucks that is. I know what I'm meant to do in this world. And every single day I get up and I do exactly what I want and what I want is still in alignment with who the fuck I is, okay? It is self mastery. It is understanding that you are the master of yourself. Now, not everybody, not everybody is going to be in that, in that kind of mentality. And this is where we have 
this is where we have um, religious organizations. This is where we have, you know, religions. This is where we have like different types of uh, people who need to be following different religions and stuff like that because they need guides. They need guidance. They can't just take that upon themselves necessarily. They need guidance. However, the majority majority of you will actually it will benefit you to strive for self mastery because because then you don't need anybody else to guide you but you okay there's nothing wrong with seeking guidance from xyz and b and d and whoever houdini okay there's nothing absolutely nothing wrong with that there's no, absolutely nothing wrong with being part of religion or believing in different things absolutely nothing wrong with that but understand that you're even having knowledge of practicing and doing all of that kind of stuff is a step closer to your own self mastery because everything that you practice is supposed to elevate you up that level you're supposed to keep striving closer to that self mastery i mean but why do we practice protection so we don't get tripped up while we are healing while we are doing our self mastery like imagine being in school, taking a class, you're in class, right? You are being taught something. You're supposed to take a test, right? So you can get a certificate and become the doctorate, the masters, whatever. And then you have somebody next to you on both sides, annoying you to the point that you can't even pay attention. You cannot master the course. You, you cannot master what it is that you're trying to learn, what it is that you're trying to achieve, what it is that you're paying for, okay? You can't do any of that because you have things coming out from the sides that keep distracting you, attacking you, and kind of poking you so you could look in a different way and then fail at what it is is that you're supposed to be doing protection work protection work you protect yourself so you can maintain your road to self mastery so you can stay in alignment so you can stay in a space of abundance of a space of health a space of healing and nobody can fucks with you nobody can get in that space nobody nobody can nobody can get past that point because you have set the expectation. You have said, this is what I'm doing. This is what I will tolerate. This is what I'm not gonna tolerate, okay? This is not what I'm gonna also tolerate, but this is what I am allowing in my space. This is what I'm not allowing in my space, okay? And right now, the space, y'all got the space filled with some, with some, with some really draining shit is what I'm gonna call it. It's draining. The Five of Pentacles is draining. It's really, really draining. And it's creating a lot of issues on the root level. It's affecting y'all, especially because y'all, Taurus rules the finances too, okay? Venus, love, pleasure, money. Okay, love, pleasure, money. It's affecting y'all financially. It's affecting y'all in the physical realm. It's affecting y'all financially. Financially, you are seeing a pushback in this you are you're being asked okay but like what are you doing with your finances how are you gaining more how are you more comfortable with money what is your relationship with money this is all, always one of the questions that i bring up to y'all because a lot of the time if within society we tend to have a negative relationship with money because of debt because of credit cards because of shit that's passed down to us because of bills that have to get paid because of like the structure that the system itself is built on in regards to money we are taught especially in the united states that every single freaking coin you get you have to spend and that that it goes in the, in the way that we kind of have to work for it in this nine to five mindset where it's like we have to work for so many hours in the day to get a lower pay grade than we should be getting for the work that we're doing so we can try to afford some of the shit that we should be already having in our lives like y'all 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 so how is your finances what wh where are your streams of income what are you doing in order to create more financial wealth coming your way How are you disassociating yourself from your parents' financial habits so that you can have financial wealth and success? Cause I'm I'm just I'm just saying, I'm just saying there's this energy of like, there's this straight energy of debt. There's this energy of 
fear of like not being grounded to the earth. Like think of a tree, think of how trees are so deeply rooted, okay? That is how the root chakra works, okay? We're all walking around this earth, but we are deeply rooted in certain things, whether that be our home, our house, our car, our relationships, our family members, our ancestors, like what is your, where are your roots? How are you enjoying those roots? How have you healed those roots? What is growing in your garden? These, these are y'all, these, these are the questions. These are the questions that I asked. And so to conclude the reading, we have five of cups in reverse and we have the ace of pentacles. You are actively missing opportunities. Hold on, babes, don't give me a kiss. We are, you are actively missing opportunities by not reevaluating how, how, okay, how the debt energy, how the negative energy, how the things, the weeds, the weeds that have been growing in your garden that have not been bearing you fruit. All that wasted garden space, y'all. You, you are actively seeing how that is preventing you from gaining. There's absolutely no gains if you do not put in the work, if you do not reevaluate. If you do not reevaluate. How are we ending the week with the Ace of Pentacles in reverse, y'all? Please, please. How? How are we ending the week with the Ace of Pentacles in reverse in Taurus season? The sign of wealth, enjoyment, and money. The sign that rules the financial system. The sign that rules tradition, okay? How are we actively looking at what we have been grounded in? The financial habits that have been passed down to us by our family members, by our ancestors, okay? And how are we actively healing? That's that hermit card. The Virgo is coming. I'm telling you, anytime there's an earth side season, the other two signs, okay, that's Capricorn and Virgo be coming through like, ding, 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 our sister's here. You need to also pay attention to us. Like, how are you healing though? Do you think you can enjoy anything without healing yourself? It's also the question. You think you're actually going to feel better if you don't heal what needs to be healed, if you don't focus on releasing the things that have been creating this energy of debt, this energy of lack. I just, I need to know. The people need to know, and the people is me, specifically, specifically me, specifically I, okay? Because I do feel like it just, a lot of it is in our head. And I, I want to make that clear. Jupiter and Saturn is still an aqua, okay? It's still an Aquarius. And look at the bottom of the deck. We have the Queen of Swords, the Knight of Swords, the Ten of Swords, okay? The Four of Pentacles, the card of straight up stubbornness and not wanting to let go. The Six of Wands, because there is a lot to be gained from the steps that we take from us not being as rigid, okay? From us not trying to stay on the, the negative habits and negative thinking, the negative things that have been trying to pass down for a while. Knight of Cups, magician. You see, y'all, magician what is the magician one mercury where's mercury taurus what does the magician do the magician wheels all aces in tarot all aces the ace of cups the ace of all of the aces you can see that in the card itself the magician card always has all of the aces because it rules it's, it rules all the ones because it's because it is the ones it rules all the ones in, in tarot which ace did come up came up in the reading Upside freaking down, the Ace of Pentacles. We are not wheeling this right now properly. And a lot of it is all in our head, okay? That's why we're getting a lot of this Ten of Swords energy. A lot of this is all in our head. There's some of you that actively feel defeated from your circumstances, but it's almost like y'all forgetting that y'all got free will and that y'all can make choices. Y'all can do something about some of these things. Like, it's kind of like, 
if just think about oh my god y'all think about like harry potter the first movie when they're playing one of my favorite scenes when they're playing the damn chess game okay the chess game that has to be played in order to get to the door that leads to the thing that needs to be get okay the chess game what do you think is gonna happen if you don't move or if you even don't pay attention to where you're moving your pieces you gonna get owned by the other team. The point is to win. The point is self mastery. You do not win by actively throwing away your chances, throwing away your damn shot. We're just gonna be quoting all of my favorite things right now. Let's just throw Hamilton in the mix. But straight up throwing away your shot, throwing away your chance at happiness, success, healing, all of these things that you you actively want, if you actually sit down with yourself and like, and I'm talking about before you even try to even think, oh my God, I need to get a reading. I need somebody like, like, no, 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 no. What is it that you need? What do you need? If you were to be getting a reading by someone right now, okay, what would you be asking about? What topic, what area of your life? Why do you need, why do you need insight in that area? What work have you been doing in that area? How have you been trying to shift and heal that area or create change in that area? Why do you need someone else to tell you what to do in that area when you know you haven't been doing jack shit in that area? What have you been doing? What work have you been applying? What is it, like, I swear to God, I, and I, I say this as a tarot reader, as a past life reader, I as an astrologer, y'all. I, I Listen, listen, I'm telling y'all right now. What it is that you feel like you need a reading for, a lot of the time, it's something that you haven't been working on. Because then the question is, and this is why some of y'all, some of y'all ancestors come through in the readings that I be given and then y'all be getting yelled at. Because straight up, they be like, you need to focus on this. And then I just be like, I'm saying it with love, but this is what they're saying. <laughs> what, it, what is it that you need? And what are you going to do about it? Okay. Even the point of getting a reading is to figure out what you're going to do about it. Like, yeah, I know a lot of y'all like getting yelled at and stuff. Cause, okay. I know a lot of y'all like getting, you know. Woo, spiritually like slapped and shit and that's great and all but at the end of the day what is it that you need and when you ask yourself oh my god what is it that i need right now listen to yourself your intuition the first thing that comes to your head the first thing that triggers that point is gonna tell you exactly what you need it's gonna tell you exactly what you need to do please learn you working with your intuition 1000% helps with your own self mastery. It helps with your own self evolution because when you listen to yourself, you say, I trust my own guidance. I trust my direction for myself in my life. I trust that I'm doing the right thing for my highest and greatest good. And if it's not for your highest and greatest good, trust and believe your intuition is going to be like, ding, 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 red flag, red flag, red flag. So what is it that you're doing? I just, I, I, the people need to know. And the people, it's me. I, I would love to know. I would love, I would love to know. I would, y'all. What is it that we collectively need to know for this week? Y'all, okay. You see, and this is why, and this is why. I'm going to just low-key become an Oracle card reader on some lo on the low, on the low, because this is just straight up, listen. Okay. First and foremost, the card, first card that we're getting is past life. Past life. Okay? Past life. Past life. I'm not really surprised about this as far as the energy what because okay let me explain this because the root chakra itself when we're in an earthy season it triggers what we've been grounded in before in the past that includes that goes from childhood to 
past lives itself okay a lot of the, there are sometimes a lot of the time our current life that we are living it is a, di a di direct reaction to a past life that we didn't get to complete properly or maybe we even had the opposite mission of what we're trying to do in this lifetime so for example let's say you had a lifetime where you were super super focused on your family and you're like friend circle and the you know your collective like your close people in this lifetime you might have been born with the energy of you know being more outside with the public with the the rest of the world not necessarily being cooped up within that family dynamic but also being um put in a position where you are able to shine within the collective okay so there is this energy of past life coming through there is this signaling that there are certain things that have been that are right now triggering us from a past life point so if you are trying to work through something if you're trying to work through a message or a download or if you're trying to actively like do what you what you were meant to do in this lifetime if you're working towards your life lesson if you're working towards achieving and pushing through in that way then you are actively working with that past life energy the more steps you take towards doing that work the more that you heal the more that you are in that alignment the more that you can actively just it's almost like merge with yourself you're actively like it's a, it's it works in like in this reflective way okay for some of you you need to revisit a past life and for those who have past life readings with me this week please think of your questions now so that way we can do the work when that comes through but for some of you you do need to revisit a specific past life there is transformation that needs to be had there's an evolution that needs to be had the, if you're having specifically financial problems it could be from a past life issue as well because let's say you were um in a past life you were a parent right and you your partner was the one that was bringing all the finances to your actual you know to the family and you weren't really the one making anything in this lifetime which could be a reflection of that one now you're put in the position where you actually have to create those funds for yourself because what you value in this lifetime is more through your finances so there is this transformation this evolution that's happening that's pushing through from our past life energy that we have to like really really sit down and reflect and say okay what is it how am i transforming how am i um becoming one with myself how am i not only gaining the gifts from those past lives and using the gifts that i have from those past lives but how am i being in alignment with my highest self how am i making the right moves the right how am i pushing forward correctly how am i doing that okay we have magic 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 spiritual cleansing which 1000% I recommend that all of you, all of you take a spiritual bath. Um, start of any new season or start of any new month, I always recommend taking a spiritual bath just to calibrate yourself and welcome in the blessings of that specific season towards you. Highly, highly, highly recommend taking a spiritual bath. And then we have the divine masculine, which is what? The physical realm, root chakra, okay? Divine masculine energy the physical manifestation what has been blocking your specific intentions how have they been transforming so you can actively manifest what it is that you want into your life productively accurately and how do you do that by cleansing away by releasing by transforming by letting go by healing healing some of y'all need healing and it shows some of y'all actively actively need to heal and it shows and it shows some of you need to make sure your practice your craft is a one right now you're actively working with your craft every day you're applying yourself every single day what is working with your craft look like on a tourist season that means you making tea you blessing them herbs before you make the, before you drink the tea you better bless the herbs with the properties so at least those herbs are working for you okay that means say, saying a prayer when you wake up or before you leave the house 
okay? For protection. With your exorcists, that means you're doing libations, okay? That means you're making sure that there's water on their altar, fresh water every single day on their art altar. What does your practice look like? What is it that you need to change alter or evolve? What do you need to add? What do you need to remove? I mean, listen, 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 listen. What do we need to know collectively? Okay, I jumped out my fast. Okay, oh, sorry. I clicked on something and then it showed the, the comment. Hold on, YouTube. Where's the mouse? The mouse has appeared, y'all. Oh, wait. And the, oh, the mouse is frozen. I don't know. Okay, mountain, spiritual quest. Mountain, spiritual crest. Bring to fruition. Bring to fruition. Awaken your magic. Awaken your magic. Keep things simple. And this is this is what I mean. There are things that are way too complicated. Right now, I feel like I feel like some of you guys' lives are a little bit chaotic because there's a lack of balance, there's a lack of healing, there's a lack of focus, okay? And there needs to be like this easy breezy simplicity, okay? Easy breezy like simplicity that pushes through your everyday. There needs to be something that makes you happy, something that focuses on your body. How are you feeling? How's your mind? How is your emotional health, okay? How's your mental health? How's your physical health? What are you eating? Earth seasons are for root foods, by the way. They're all about root foods. So I need y'all to make sure you're eating your root vegetables and your greens. Your root vegetables, your greens, and your fruits. I need y'all to be on it. And we got fertile new roll. Fertile, as in it's ready. It's ready to grow. It's ready to grow. As in there's a focus on the land. There's a focus on your, your garden. What can grow? What is it that you want to plant? What is it that you want to, what the, that you value, that you want to see grow within your life? Where do you want to see yourself a year from now? Because by this time as a year from now, we're going to be back in our airy season. It's going to be a new year. It's going to be a new astrological year. What are, what is the things that you expect yourself to accomplish? What are the things that you expect yourself to achieve? How do you want to elevate yourself? What do you think that your self-mastery looks like? How, how, what do you think would make you in alignment coming up within the next year? What does that look like for you? What is being in alignment? What does being healed look like for you? What is being um, loved would look like for you? What does being financially um, stable, wealthy, abundant look like for you? What does, think about that vision, okay? Think about that vision. Hold that in your head. What do we need to know collectively? Okay. We have miracles. I knew he, I knew he was going to come up in this reading, but I'm just laughing. And we have Archangel Michael. Some of y'all need to pray in the shows. We got miracles. Miracles. Why miracles? Because what happens when you put in the work? What happens when you put in the work? What happens when you're at work and you've been working, you've been, you've been putting in the work, and you every day you come into work, you do your thing, you're not late, you know, you have you you have accumulated a reputation for yourself. You, you you know what happens when you put in the work? Blessings come after that. You working on yourself, you saying, you know what, I need to do this for myself. I need to focus on myself. I need to like, I need to do some ancestor work. I need to make sure that I'm taking care of my my health, my spiritual health, my mental health. What does doing that work lead you to? Self mastery. And then you could say, oh, it's a miracle. It's a miracle that I got through that 
that I was able to overcome this and then I was able to become who I'm supposed to be. All right, Angel Gabriel, what do we need to focus on for this week? What do we need to be focusing on for this week? Okay, Archangel has a lot of things. I mean, Archangel Gabriel has a lot of things to say right now. So, the first one is deserving. Okay, deserving from Archangel Gabriel. You, like all of God's children, deserve happiness, health, and love. So the question is, if you deserve it, why can't you have it? What's the problem? What's the problem? What is stopping you from having those things? What is stopping you from being happy? What is making you unhappy? What is making you not feel love? What is making you not be grounded, not have financial success and abundance, not be ground? I can literally go on all day, y'all, but y'all have to answer these questions for yourself. Because at the end of the day, you deserve all and more. So what are you doing to make space for those things that you already deserve? The next one, agent, agent of or manager. Okay. And it says, your work expands its reach as you partner with a professional who can help you. Because sometimes we can't do things by ourselves. There are some times that we need assistance, that we need perspective. There are some people who are gifted at seeing things differently that can help us. That can help us build, that can help us ground, that can help us like solidify the vision itself. Like, let's say you got to download an idea or a project, or you know what the thing should be, like what it should, how it can help, but you don't know how to conceptualize it. There are definitely people that can help you with that. There are people, there's help out there to help you ground that, to help you figure out what it is that you need to do, how to put it all together. This is very much Libra energy, by the way, which I'm not surprised that it's kind of like, coming up this is that partnership energy this is working with the collective right now with jupiter and aquarius um and saturn and aquarius the 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 way to understand what that means is that we are blessed by working together okay jupiter and aquarius we are blessed by working together we have ex we can expand our understanding our knowledge our education by working together why because jupiter is the planet of abundance expansion luck opportunity education higher knowledge aquarius is the sign of the collective it's a sign of friends society technology it is a sign of society how do we work together and what does that do by working together right now it's not just about you. You can't build everything on your own. You can't build everything on your own. Some things will require help. Some things will require more of you. Like right now, I am in the process of working. I'm working on a really big project. And one of the things that I recognize right away is that there are some things that I cannot do within this project. I am not a lawyer. I am not an accountant, okay? I am not going to actively even try to do those things by myself even though i'm a capricorn and my ass is all i can do things i can make it work i can you know we're very business oriented i actively am aware that there are some limitations that i have that i can come up with those ideas that i can come up and, and get those downloads that actively work towards a larger goal or larger vision of things without but by also understanding that i can't do everything by myself you can't like run a whole entire, like you can't, you know, steer a whole entire ship, like a huge, huge ship by your damn self. There needs to be someone in maintenance. There needs to be someone checking the pipes. There needs to be someone doing a lot of other stuff. It cannot just be you. There is that collective, that partnership energy, that Libra energy even says, Listen, you need to work together. You need to have somebody come in, balance that out. Balance, balance, balance the two. Because what happens if you're not balanced, what happens if you think you can carry everything by yourself is that you can get overwhelmed 
because you're not looking at your other resources, you can get burnt out and then you don't even want to work towards it anymore. You don't even want to do it because you feel like if you can't do it alone, then why should you even put it out? Listen, you, you, you have to work together, together. Open your heart to love. If that's not the most Venusian thing that you could have heard. Um, the more you open your heart and pour your love into your creations, the greater their life force energy. It has to come down to love, okay? Love is one of the highest vibration vibrations, period. So when you love something, when you feel passionate about something, okay, when you want to do something because you love it, because it brings you so much joy, because you value it, because you feel like it just makes you and brings you so much joy, so much light, so much healing, so much space, and be yourself at that. You have to understand that the work that needs to be done, the things that you need to do that you have to work towards, you have to love what it is that you're doing at the end of the day. If it lacks that in Taurus season, you gonna have to be like, oh, I don't love it, I can't have it. This is one of those, I don't love it, I'm not, I'm, if you don't love it, you gotta leave it. This is something that me and my sister and my mom, well, mainly me and my sister, we do this at the thrift store. You guys, for those who follow me on YouTube, because I know I have like three different platforms in here, but for my YouTube squad that knows that I do the witchly, the witchy thrift store hauls um, on YouTube, y'all know that I always go to the thrift store and meet, we have like a whole monthly, monthly thing that we do. Now, me and my sister have this particular practice that if we don't love what it is that we picked up, we might have been intrigued and put it in our cart because we do that. We'll walk around and be like, oh, this is cool. This is cute. Oh, this might fit me. Oh, no, 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 no. But at the end of the day, what are we spending our coins on? Do we love it? Is this something that is going to bring us genuine joy? Are we going to look good wearing this? Am I going to like love reading through this book? Am I going to love um like burning the scented candle am i going to love this like statue or or this kind of figurine or like this like whatever it is like am i gonna love it am i gonna love it in my space do i see it in my energy do i see it in my space and if we don't we leave it even if we liked it even if we kind of stirred our curiosity or was like oh i kind of thought i think this is cool or i think you know i kind of like this but at the end of the day it comes down to that love do you love it? Do you need it? Is it necessary? The next one, speeches and speaking. You have an important message to deliver that can help others. Speeches and speaking. Why is this? Because of Aquarius energy. Jupiter and Aquarius, Saturn Aquarius says, there are a lot there are a lot of messages that are being delivered right now that's happening through the collective they're being funneled through through social media there are things that you are seeing like through TikTok through Instagram Twitter whatever that are actively showing you and sh like like kind of piquing your curiosity or even like you know, you, you read something that was intriguing and now you, you found yourself Googling it and now you're trying to do more research and now you're just like, oh, what was that that this person was talking about? I'm kind of curious as to what that is. I'm kind of curious as to like, you know, what that means. What can I do with that? How can that help me? What? Why am I being kind of called to look into this? Why did this pique my curiosity in the first place? Okay, there's this kind of like importance in words okay there's valuables in words mercury and taurus there's valuable things in words taurus is the value mercury is the words there's a lot of things that are valuable right now you look through your social media if anything piques your curiosity dive in a little bit deeper into some of those things because those are messages and downloads that are being confirmed through that lens okay through that lens now Let's ask Archangel Michael. Archangel Michael, what do we need to know for this week? What do we need to know collectively? What do we need to know collectively for this week? Ooh. Okay, Archangel Michael has a lot to say today. So 
Y'all gonna have to bear with me right now. Okay, so. The first one. Admit the truth to yourself and act accordingly. Admit the truth to yourself and act accordingly. Y'all. Do you have any idea? Do you have any idea how hard this could be sometimes? Admit the truth to yourself and act accordingly. Like you can actively admit and say, wow, you know what? I shouldn't have spoken to this person like that. That was kind of a little bit harsh. Maybe I should have like been a little nicer about it. Like that was kind of bitchy of me. Like, I, that wasn't in alignment with me. I shouldn't have done that. You know how hard? Do you know how hard that can be sometimes because of the ego, okay? And your ability to not admit stuff to yourself all lies on your ego. If you are actively kind of like, no, I'm perfect. No, I don't do anything wrong. No, there's absolutely nothing wrong with me. I Every step I take is right and I never do anything wrong. And this includes in friendships, okay? This includes in family. This includes in every everything. You don't want to hear it from anybody. You don't want to hear anybody's opinion, which by the way is the, the, the opposite of the Aquarian energy that's in the, that's out there right now. What is the truth and what do you need to admit to yourself? How have you been setting up yourself for failure? How have you been setting up yourself to stay stagnant? How have you maintained the energy of stagnation within your life, within your mental health, within your relationships, within your friendships? How many toxic friends have you kept around you that you know are toxic, but you refuse to admit it because you know if you do, you got to let them go? I mean, I'm just saying. Focus on, upon divine and perfect health. And this is what I'm saying. This is why, this is why the Virgo energy, the Hermit energy, it's coming up. All right. This is why it's coming up. And I'm telling you, some of y'all, it's just gonna, it's gonna trigger. I need y'all to literally go to, to your transits. Go, go to your chart. Okay. Go to your natal chart. Where is Taurus in your natal chart? Don't tell me Taurus is nowhere in your natal chart. Okay. Because your house will be there. Trust. You will have Taurus in one of your houses. Where is it in your natal chart? Where is it transiting right now? Which house? Which house? Because right now, there's a lot of healing that needs to happen. And it's almost like this is something that has been, it just, it's just been, it, the work itself has been avoided. The steps itself has been avoided. There's been a lot of excuses, okay? There's been a lot of, you know, trying to keep things, try, trying to, trying to presumably, okay? Trying to, trying to convince yourself that you don't really need to do anything about it. You don't really, you, you don't really need to do anything about it. You don't need to. Why would, why, why do you need to, why do you need to stand up for yourself? Why do you need to, to tell that person that what they said was fucked up? Why do you need to tell your mom that she keeps pushing on her own emotional trauma on you and it's creating an energy of toxicity within your relationship? Why do you, no, I don't, I don't want to get into that. I don't want to have, oh my God, but why do I have to do that? Because what are you gaining from having that amount, that level of toxicity in your life? What are you gaining from not setting personal boundaries that help to expand your own growth? What are you gaining from not doing that? I need to know. I need to, I need to know because at the end of the day, you know, you are not healed when your life is absolute, complete chaos. You know, you need healing 
okay? When your emotional energy, your mental health, your spiritual body is just not in alignment. You know you need to practice more self-care when you don't even know what love should feel like anymore. And so what should you focus on? Divine and perfect health. Divine and perfect health. That's that hermit card. That's that hermit card. And it's upside down because you guys have been ignoring it for quite a bit. For quite a bit. Divine and perfect health. In order for you to achieve self-mastery, like I said earlier, you need to know how to heal yourself. You need to know how to maintain your healing. You need to know how to protect yourself from that which can cause harm upon you then create things that you need to heal y'all i need y'all to get it together i need i need listen i'm gonna ask all set to give me some some messages for y'all and then we're gonna wrap up that was a lot i said what do the collective need to work on for this week what do the collective need to work on for this? Okay. Okay. She was like, this and that, and that and this, and this and also that, and also that and this. Okay. The first one. This is power over the seven scorpions. Power over the seven scorpions, okay? Power over the seven scorpions. You are being initiated into the magic of conjuring. So you... So ask to have the power to affect lower vibrational forces through your own will and spoken word. You are guided to use this powerful gift with compassion and discernment, with mercy and non-judgment. You can then manage any toxicity in your life swiftly and with great effect. How do you use this? As I mentioned what was it, last week? Because we talked about the throat chakra. Where the, the fastest, the fastest, the fastest, the fastest moving chakra. Okay, the one that creates toxicity instantaneously. Right here. This is the chakra, is your voice. When you choose, when you choose to speak ill, that's exactly what is being manifested. When you choose to speak strength, that's exactly the energy that you are connecting to. You need to be very aware of how you are speaking on the low vibrational energies. And what I mean by that is when you see, okay, you're seeing some tension within your relationships, some your friendships, your, you know, who you're connecting to, who you're talking to. There's just like this weird vibe. You're getting like, weird dreams about one of your friends they're like coming up as like they're attacking you or they're coming up envious or you're getting like some you know a lot of protect yourself protect yourself protect yourself energy so what are you telling yourself are you telling yourself you're vulnerable are you telling yourself you're going to get attacked are you telling yourself oh my god somebody put a curse on, on me are you t what does your protection look like how are you speaking power to your own strength? How are you maintaining and literally pushing back on the lower vibrational energies? How are you using your power to protect you? How are you calling on your own personal power to maintain your own personal energy? Y'all, y'all, okay, y'all. Next one, scale, scales of balance. This is that, that Libra energy coming through again. Balancing, give and take, directing and flowing, play and solitude are always, are ways to, to heal the relationship between the inner masculine and the feminine energies. Connection with the body is the most powerful form of healing for the feminine energy as it holds the secrets to divine feminine wisdom. So dance, sing, and play. Balance. Balance. Okay, so... Throughout Taurus season, if you find yourself unhappy, not enjoying the vibes, not enjoying the mood, okay? If you find yourself emotionally complicated to any capacity, okay? There is an imbalance and y'all, I, I need, I, I need y'all to revisit. I need y'all to re, 
a line, I need you to figure out what, why, why, why is there an imbalance? Why are you dealing with this imbalance? What are you doing about the imbalance? Are you going to stay in balance? Or are you going to try to balance yourself? How are you healing yourself from this imbalance? How are you listening to what your body is telling you? Because your body tells you when you're in balance, it tells you with pain. Okay. It tells you with pain. Oh, your knees hurt. Your root chakra is getting a little blocked. Okay. Your root chakra is getting a little blocked. You feel sluggish. Your solar plexus is blocked. You feel numb. Your heart chakra is blocked. You can't stop talking shit. Your throat chakra is hella blocked. Like just straight up, straight up, straight up blocked. You can't see anything for yourself coming up in the future. Your third eye chakra is blocked. You're depressed. You have headaches. You don't know what you should be doing to move ahead. Your crown chakra is blocked. What are you doing about it? The imbalances are literally, literally like boop, 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 boop. You feel them. You feel them. You feel them. Because you wake up and you feel it. When you wake up, your subconscious comes into consciousness. Because the subconscious is our dreams, okay? So we come into our conscious mind when we rise up from our bed, right? We come back into our bodies. Our bodies, which have been resting for a certain amount of time, okay? Has been, you know, still for a certain amount of time. We haven't been eating. We haven't been doing none of that. We've just been resting. We come back to our bodies and our body immediately starts to tell you. It starts to talk to you. It's like, uh, you need to stretch. Uh, you're a little bit hungry. Uh, you're feeling a little tired. Uh, that dream was really, really, has me a little confused. Or, uh, like, what was that? Like, mm, like, there's too much light or there's a sensitivity there. Your body starts to calibrate and starts to tell you exactly what you needed to know while you were sleeping. So what are you doing about it? Oh, you're feeling like uh, some tension. Go stretch. You're feeling hungry. Go eat. Feed yourself. What are you doing? How are you reacting? How are you, re how are you reacting? Y'all, mother of life, mother of life. When life seems dry, depleted, feel filled with repetitive tasks or simply stagnant and stifled, Iris, the mother of life, holds the ability to revive even the most numb, resistant and difficult circumstance in your life. She calls to you now seeking to bestow gifts of of life upon you. Be bold and brave. Open your arms to receive. The gift of life. Life. What, do, what does life look like? What does being born look like? New life, new opportunities, new things coming in, new things to focus on, new things to get inspired by. New downloads, okay? New guidance. If you have been getting pushed towards that guidance, getting downloads, getting messages in your dreams, the recurring dreams, all of this, how, what are you doing about those things? What are you doing about it? Some of y'all work to build your intuition so then you could do absolutely nothing about it what is the point what is the point of having an alarm system if when you have a break-in in your house you're just gonna you're just not gonna do anything you're just not gonna do anything about it what is the point of having it then lady of the stars y'all lady of the stars Cyrus is a celestial goddess, the star of unconditional love and wisdom at an extremely high vibration. She brings deep soul awakening, spiritual gifts, and high capacity for divine service. She asks you to pay attention now because something significant is taking place at a spiritual level for you at this time. Lady of the stars, where is Uranus transiting for you? Where? Where is Uranus? Where is it? I need, 
I need I need y'all to look at your natal chart, and I need y'all to figure out where Uranus is transiting for you. Because I am telling you, if you don't pay attention, you're gonna get caught off guard, and then you're gonna come to me, and they're gonna be like Abby, and I'm gonna be like, well, what you been doing this whole time? And then you're gonna be like, well, and then I'm gonna be like. Because that is a question. What have you been doing? What are you going to be doing? What do you want to be doing? How are you going to be growing? Like, what? That is the question. Anyway, that was this week's healing circle, y'all. Okay. I'm going to go through these comments because it was a lot. It was a lot. Hold on. Okay. Hold on. I'm starting with I'm starting with YouTube first because it's a lot. Hi, Lana. Oh, my God. Hi. Um. Hold on, there's a lot of comments in here. Um, duh, duh, duh. Duh, 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 duh. The insights were very aggressive with the self-love all over. I'm not really surprised that you're getting like for the meditation that you got self-love because it's Taurus season. Tauruses love to love themselves. Um, and it kind of creeps into like, and it leads up to like Leo energy once we get into like Leo season and stuff like that. But it's, it's, we have these love point seasons within astrology. If you notice, they're all a couple of months apart, but it all comes back to that pleasure, that love, that self-love energy, the partnership, how we experience love um, energy. So I'm not surprised that you're getting a lot of the self-love because before you could like self-mastery, part of self-mastery is learning how to love yourself and enjoying life the way that you need to enjoy life. Like the part of that work is that. Um, do, do, do. That was interesting. I got, don't deny the dogs, go for a walk, have fun. And by the way, you're meeting your person this year. Okay, bye. <laughs> that is wonderful. I'm glad y'all third eyes are really, really active. That's just, y'all, y'all. What? Okay. Um, do, do, do. Kept, keep getting the download to start therapy. So I'm doing it for this next chapter. Being open-minded. 100%. 100%. Be open-minded to the process and your personal triggers as well. Um, do, do, do. Do, do, do. Jay Martinez. Oh, so you have to, you have Uranus in your in your ninth house? Is that what you were trying to tell me? I I presume, I was it that you were trying to tell me? In your ninth house, Uranus in your ninth house is definitely like not only uh, focusing on education, but also travel. But take putting yourself out of the country as far as like self evolution and growth. It it requires you to step out of your comfort zone and step out of your natural habitat or foundation. Like you actually need to, you know, take a trip, take a new course, go back to school. Like it, it, it's, it's kind of like a try to learn something new, try to expand your, like your mind elsewhere, especially where you're being kind of pulled to right now. Um, um, the Taurus energy is spiritual as fuck for me, Saturn and Taurus here. My body's been <laughs> feeling heavier and I feel like I'm releasing a lot. Saturn and Taurus, Lord, eighth house in Taurus. Oh, oh my God, y'all. Eighth house in Taurus is like some really deep transformations. But the good thing is that you might be able to get like your finances, you'll probably be able to get it together. Like your Saturn will be able to restrict you enough because Saturn be like, he you don't, know, he be that type whip. Like he'll be able to restrict, restrict you enough where you're actively like, you know, getting things in order. Cause that's what he wants at the end of the day. He's like, I just want you to get, I just want you to get it. To, I want you to get it together. Um, I have Uranus in my sixth house. You're calling me out. Listen, y'all, I'm just saying, are you paying attention to your body? I'm just, I'm just saying. Um, Uranus and Capricorn in my fourth house. Woo, that's a lot of family stuff, but that's also a lot of ancestor work. So that's actually not, it's not really that bad, to be honest. That's not bad. Um, that That's just, a, it's a lot of soul work, but it's also a lot of ancestor work. It's a lot of 
family work. It's a, it's a lot of like root chakra healing when it comes to the family line. So that includes like working with some of your ancestors, specifically calling on the ones that were really good at grounding or building something. And if that's something that is in alignment with like some, whatever it is that you're building that actually helps like push you towards that. So it's, it's a really helpful energy, like at the end of the day. Um, uh, you don't know how much I needed this reminder today. Thank you. She was welcome, boo. Um, I had a feeling I was going to get yelled at. <laughs> you already know. Y'all, you already know. Y'all already know what this is. Um, Taurus in the third house is the communication. It's the, it's the, you, first of all, I highly, if you have Taurus in the third house, I highly recommend looking at and listening to affirmations on a regular, okay? Especially financial affirmations, like money affirmations, business affirmations, like opportunities affirmations. I am affirmations. I am affirmations are really good for self-mastery and to like level yourself up that way. You need to be watching your words and how, you know, you're talking shit, including about yourself or others, because that's when your rightness is going to be like, oh, so you're going to say you broke this week? Bet. You're going to be work broke for the next, the rest of the month, like on, on the, on the petty, on the petty. Um, so just be careful with your words. Make sure that you're actively understanding that your words are money. Your words are valuable. So don't waste them. Don't waste your words. Okay. So that was, that was YouTube. Hold on. I'm trying to see Instagram, but like, um, to do, I'm trying to see Instagram, but, um, it's not like, okay. Instagram froze y'all. I can't, I can't see Instagram. I'm sorry. Um, Uranus. Okay. So TikTok, Uranus in Aquarius in the eighth house. Uranus in Aquarius in the eighth house. First of all, just the fact that Jupiter is in Aquarius, Saturn is in Aquarius in your eighth house. You have a lot of like past life work to do right now. It's a lot of past life work. That's a lot of crown chakra healing. That's a lot of self aligning. Woo. That's almost like clearing the debts, like karmic debt, because the eighth house is about debt. Having Saturn in Aquarius right now sitting in your eighth house and Jupiter expanding that energy. And having Uranus, that's like having the generational planet sit on your eighth house. That's a lot. That's definitely, that's definitely like, you know, heavy. But it's a lot of deep soul healing. You have to look deeper into yourself, the things that are um, not aware to you. Because the eighth house is all about the unconscious mind. It's not it's not up in the surface. It's not in your subconscious. It's completely unconscious to you. You're not aware of it. There's certain things that you actively need to know or need to dive in deeper into your healing, into your ancestors, um, into your different past lives as well, because the eighth house is also um, death and transformation. So how you transform through death, how you transform through your soul, um, transitioning in different lifetimes. So definitely past life work that you need to do. Um, Damn, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, but it's actively you having this placement helps your soul evolve. So you're like, you're setting yourself up for success at the end of the day. Um, the best way to navigate Uranus in the eighth house energy is meditation because Uranus rules. It's all crown chakra. Okay, it's crown. Crown, meditation. So you need to meditate regularly. You need to make sure that you are um, connecting with your higher self, higher self meditations doing affirmations words okay when you're when you have a lot of the the upper chakra energies you have to make sure that you are focused up here more that you are um understanding what's going on with your brain the thoughts what things that you're saying how you're blocking yourself with your words how like uh, like uh, your inner narrative your intuition your vision for yourself like it's a lot of deep work but it can be super super healing if you like apply yourself that's that's what i definitely can say um let me see do 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 oh somebody sent me a present thank you for the present i've never gotten a present on tiktok before um that's what my therapist says to me um, <laughs> y'all i'm just i'm just saying um every spring in my lifetime <laughs> Yo, hold on. I'm trying to scroll. There's a lot of things in here. Okay. Um, I was just 
Okay, I was just asking the universe to get specific if this was for me and you said that mom stuff. <laughs> Mine is in Mercury. You have Taurus in Mercury as well. Well, first of all, if you have Taurus in Mercury, then that means that right now, because Mercury is in Taurus, that, you know, you're having a Mercury return. Like, you know how they have like solar, return. it's like Mercury is returning to your actual natal point. Um, so that just means that you need to be very, very mindful of what you say. Mercury in Taurus often is able to manifest money through their words very, very easily, but they can also block money through their words very easily. And they can also stay stuck in different things based on what they say. So let's say you're in like a relationship or like you, you really, you know, the person's like not that great for you or they treat you like shit, but you don't really want to leave like you'll be like no but i really love them i really like they treat me great or you know they mess up sometimes but like uh and you can end up staying stuck because you're mentally trying to ground yourself in that thing that's actually not healthy so you have to be careful where how you stay in the love vibration having mercury in taurus because it, it has at the end of the day it has to make you happy if you're not having pleasure if your mind is not like stimulized in a good in a stimu in a good way um then it's gonna cause some chaos and then you're going to get really frustrated at yourself you're gonna get first frustrated with others because then you're not happy and then it's it's a loop it's a cycle but try not to be stubborn with your mind try not to be stubborn with the even with the truth itself because the truth sometimes can take away what you find some sort of pleasure in and then it, it can create a, a point where you might not want to let it go because, you know, and then Mercury retrograde comes and then, you know, you get wrecked. So it's really important to try not to be super stubborn and focus on the things that you love, the things that you value, the things that bring you mental positive stimulations, okay? That's that's my spiel on Mercury and Taurus right there. Oh my God, y'all, there was a lot of people in here. Um, okay, I think that was all the comments, I think, maybe. Um, yeah, that was all the comments. Okay, I got all the comments, y'all. I got all the comments, I believe. Um, Taurus was in my... I still don't understand the houses. So I have a whole video of the astrological houses. It's on the channel, okay? it's There's a whole YouTube video on the YouTube channel on the houses. The houses, each house represents one area of your life, okay? Literally, every house covers every single area of your life that you can think of and... And what sign you have in that house dictates how you navigate that house. So for example, my seventh house is an Aquarius. My seventh house is the house of partnership, marriage, the law, enemies, okay? Um, it, it, it's, it focuses on the Aquarian like energy for me. So basically for me, I right now, like if I'm looking at the transits, I have Jupiter sitting in my seventh house, okay? I have Saturn sitting in my seventh house right now. So I have activity happening in my marriage, in my partnership house. Um, seventh house is also the house of enemies. So, and because the sign is an Aquarius, it might be online. Like I might have like online, and not that I'm trying to manifest that, but like, I really don't care anyway. But like online enemies or people who are envious, and it's crazy because that actually happened to me this weekend, <laughs> or people who are like envious or, you know, like this year, for example, I got engaged in January. The next month, the, literally every single month, I've been hella blessed this year. Why? Because I have Jupiter sitting in my seventh house. Um, and so there's just like this focus when the planets are transiting in that specific area, I have more energy in that space. In addition to that, let's say like for Uranus, I have um, my Taurus energies in my 10th house. Okay, the, the, the 10th house is the house of career, social status, legacy. Okay, legacy. I have Taurus in my 10th house and Uranus is transiting in Taurus right now, which means that he's transiting in my 10th house, which means that there is a focus on my career, my work, my legacy, what I'm bringing to the table, how I am presenting myself to y'all, how, what, what am I how am i bringing what what am i bringing to the table what am i saying hey world this is who i am this is what i do this is why it's meaningful this is why i was born to do this this is this is why and so there is a highlight of that and you guys will actually see how that kind of comes into play i already know 
you guys will see. There, there will be an announcement next month in Taurus season for y'all to see what this is building up to. But um, so yeah, so basically the houses are triggering and activating and highlighting um, different areas of your house. Sixth house is a house of healings and disease and health and how you serve others, the mundane, the daily stuff you do. You're doing the laundry, you're working through your sixth house. The sign that's in your sixth house tells you how lazy you are, how much work you do, how clean your house is, okay? It tells you a lot. It tells you a lot just by looking at the sign within the house. So your houses are literally, they, they, they break down a lot of things for you. And you're able to really like, and don't ever listen to anybody, any astrologer that says like, oh, the houses are not being you know that no planets are sitting on or dead houses there's no such thing as a dead house okay there's no such thing as a dead house you work through every single house every single house has an impact on your life because you use every single house in your life okay so definitely look at that video that i did i broke down all the houses it's in my youtube okay um taurus in my 10th oh my god we twinning um and uranus in my sixth house oof but right now, Uranus is transferring your 10th house. So we're both going through the same thing. <laughs> we're both going through the same thing right now. It's like, elevate yourself. Um, by the way, I mean, Uranus in my fifth, Taurus in my 10th. No, that means Uranus is transiting your 10th right now. Even though you're, because right, I have Uranus in Capricorn. But right now, Uranus is in Taurus. So whatever sign Uranus is in now is which like whatever house it's in now based on the sign that's where it's being triggered that's where it's being activated um do 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 i want an online wedding y'all we will try we're trying to do it in the woods y'all and i'm gonna be doing a whole ritual to <laughs> the spirits and everything there will be a vlog for sure but i don't know if we're gonna be able to like do a live stream i don't know maybe i can try but i don't i don't know i don't know if i can make that happen i don't know if i can make that happen because we're trying to do like a really woodsy wedding um so yeah i don't know i don't know we'll i'll let you know when we're closer to next year i guess um there you go abby always be all on it <laughs> y'all already know okay y'all y'all what plant is that behind you this one or that one which one? This is called the, this, this is called the, what's it called? Why was I, why was I saying the palms of, it's not the palms of paradise. What is it called? Is it the palms of paradise? Am I bugging? Hold on, I'm gonna have to Google that. My computer is about to die, y'all. Like in, oh, I, I'm at 5%. And if I don't finish this live, before the 5%, the live's not going to post, so I do have to end it. <laughs> but um, I believe it's a palm to pal paradise. Yeah, it's a palm to paradise. And that is a uh, five fills, I believe. This one, the one with all the vines. But yeah, this is this is my my tropical as baby. She's she's big and she's, oh yeah, that's the, the palm to paradise. Okay, I believe it's the, the right title for it. I, if you, I believe if you look up paradise tropical plant, you're gonna get what it is. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna do, okay, so just real quick, cause somebody said, are you gonna do another live? Come back. <laughs> um, so we do lives. Oh yeah, the birds of paradise. That's what it is. I'm like the plants of paradise. It's something paradise. It's a paradise. Okay, you know, I'm, I'm from the Caribbean. Um, but it's the, bir it's a, it's the birds of paradise. Um, yeah, even my people on, on YouTube remember, I'm like, it's like the pop. I'm, I'm combining things together, y'all. Um, but we do lives on YouTube. We They get the weekly um, community oracle poll where I pull oracle cards for everybody. Um, I only do it on YouTube right now because it's like the only one that I can kind of like look through all the questions and stuff properly. Um, so y'all feel free to join us on, on YouTube. We do it every single Wednesday. Uh, I will try to do more lives. I need to put the goddess hour video. I guess I can do maybe a goddess hour live this week. I'm waiting for some of the, the videos to upload y'all, but YouTube has been really, really slow uploading some of my videos lately. So if you're still waiting on a reading for me, Give me a second. Okay, it's not me, it's YouTube. Um, 
as always, thank you guys for coming to the live. I appreciate y'all. Okay. I will see y'all. We're here every single Monday is weekly healing circle. Okay. That's what we have every single Monday. We all come here, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. Okay. And come together. Um, definitely make sure you're following me on all the other platforms. If you just got here, you want to revisit the live, you can find it on YouTube or on Instagram because they actually save the lives. TikTok doesn't save the lives, I believe. And yeah, so it can, can be complicated. Make sure you're following me on all the other platforms. I'm at the Gitana on everything. I will see y'all. I will see y'all in the next video, y'all. I love y'all so much. Thank you so much for coming. Bye, y'all. Have a beautiful night. Have a very, very beautiful night. Bye. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta end this thing. Ugh.